Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Pastor Randy here, and I want to welcome, good morning, and I want to welcome everybody to Monday Morning Bible Study. Um, you know, it's great to have you guys with us here today, you know, whether you're tuning in on YouTube or catching us on Facebook or even listening to our podcasting platforms. We appreciate you guys taking the time, you know, to to engage with God's, with, with the Word of God, right? So we're going to be talking about the last part last part of the chapter of Genesis 19, and this is the consequences of compromise, right? Um, and, you know, guys, let's just be honest. You know, we do compromise sometimes, you know what I mean? And, and we need not to. We really, really do. So I got a couple announcements before uh, we get started. Uh, sorry that we didn't have Tactical Bible Fellowship uh, church service yesterday. I was down all weekend, sicker than a dog, uh, but stupid vaccination. And I don't get vaccinations. I don't never have and this is the first time and i got wrecked so and i didn't send out that many prayer requests because i was wrecked um so guys please continue to pray for me um and stuff because it's so important right that we pray for one another and stuff like that so you know uh let's do that today amen so um also guys if you guys like to donate there's a little uh qr code there that you can donate it'll take you right to our website to where you can actually donate um, or you can go to tactical bible fellowship or tactical bible guy and donate there all our proceeds that we have that we do for this all goes into our homeless ministry we had a lot of initiatives that we did we decided to pull back a lot of those um, and then we revamped our our little parachurch which is tactical bible fellowship and then uh, we decided just to focus on the homeless in San Bernardino County, California, uh, where there is a huge need um, all over San Bernardino. You know, so uh, if you guys can give, we would appreciate it because all that goes to them. Also, we're going to be doing um, uh, Save It Uncensored. I'm probably going to do that either today or tomorrow, probably tomorrow. Um, and uh, we're going to be talking about how we should vote. We're covering the last couple of weeks um of the u.s election and we should be voting biblically right so uh guys go check that out as well all right so let's pray let's get into this heavenly father we just come before you this morning with grateful hearts ready to dive in your excuse me ready to dive into your word and seek your wisdom you know thank you for the gift of this time together for the opportunity you know to gather uh, uh here online lord uh we acknowledge your presence with with us and invite your holy spirit to guide us and guide our thoughts and our discussions throughout today lord as we explore the story of lot and his daughters help us understand the lessons within that this pat with these passages open our eyes to the truths that you want us to see and soften our hearts to receive your message uh that you would have for us today you know, may we reflect on our own lives and choices, recognizing areas where we might need your guidance and grace. You know, uh, we pray for those listening and watching, you know, that they find encouragement and strength through this study. Help us grow in your knowledge, Heavenly Father, and deepen our relationship with Christ as we learn together. We put on the full armor of God, which it says in Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Lord, we ask that you rebuild those hedges of protection, those shields around us today, Lord. Um, and Lord, um, we just ask, Lord, as we, we put on the full armor of God, Lord, that, uh, you send your, and, and we pick up the weapons of warfare, Lord, that you just, uh, send your legion of angels down to fight for us and fight with us. Lord, give us traveling mercies as we go to work, school or wherever, Lord, and just bless our day. Just bless our days, Lord. You know, um, thank you for all that you do, Lord. We pray, hey, we just get this lowly preacher out of the way and let your word go forward as we we lift up and magnify you lord in jesus name amen 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 all right guys so today we'll be looking at the last part of uh genesis 19. so genesis 19 is a chapter that presents one of the most striking narratives in the bible right the destruction of sodom and gomorrah um these two cities were notorious for their wickedness their sin and their moral depravity right and it's a topic that brings up significant discussions on sin judgment and even grace so the context of their destruction is crucial uh 
it's a topic, you know, uh, uh, it, as it highlights not just God's justice, but also his mercy in delivering those who seek him, right? Lot, Abraham's nephew, is a central figure in this narrative, right? When God decides to bring judgment upon these cities, he sends angels to rescue Lot and his family before the destruction, right? So this is an act of deliverance that showcases God's compassion, even admits the consequences of sin. Now, as we move through the, this last part of the chapter, we will see the narrative just, just doesn't end with Lot's escape. In fact, it really takes a dramatic turn as we look at the aftermath of Sodom's destruction, right? Uh, you know, in, in verses 30 through 38 um, of chapter 19, we find a miserable and troubling story of, of, about Lot's daughters, right? You know, after fleeing to a cave in the mountains away from the chaos and destruction, Lot and his, uh, uh, his daughters find themselves in a really precarious situation, right? They are isolated and in fear for their future, right? Believing that they are the last remnants of their family, right? So this fear drives them to make some, some very questionable decisions, leading, the, leading us into a deeper exploration of their, their actions and the, the implications of their choices, right? So in today's text, you know, we're going to examine the mindsets of, of Lot's daughters as they come up with a plan to ensure their continuation of their family, right? It's a plan that involves deception and incest, right? This brings to light the, the desperation they feel in their isolation and the influence of the world that, that was around them. It also invites us to consider how our circumstances can lead us to make choices that may not align with God's will, right? The, the aftermath of their actions are deep, right? And as they bear children who become the ancestors of the nation, often in conflict with Israel, the Moabites and the Ammonites. So as we dive into this text today, guys, let's keep an open heart and mind. It's easy to look at the mistakes of Lot and his daughters and feel a sense of superiority, right? But the truth is we all face moments of compromise and fear. Right. We can learn from their story, guys, you know, not not just their mistakes that they made, but also the grace of God that remains available to us, no matter how far we stray. So and when I say we stray, I'm not saying that you lose your salvation if you stray. I'm saying that, you know, God has mercy and he'll bring us back. Right. I know you guys don't agree with me when I say once saved, always saved, but that's the actual biblical truth. You can never lose your salvation. I say that a lot because some of you believe that you can. Oh, what if I walk? But well, that's, that's a whole different trip. So I'm not going to even go there right now. All right. So let's read today's text. We're going to go, we're going to, it's eight scriptures. We're going to be reading from 30 to 38. And it says this. Now Lot went up to Zayar and lived in the hills with his two daughters for he was afraid to live in Zoar. So he lived in a cave with his two daughters. And the firstborn said to the younger, our father is old and there is not a man on earth to come into us uh, after the manner of all the earth. Come, let us make father drink wine and we will lie with him that we may preserve our offspring from our father. So they made their father drink wine at that night. And the firstborn went in to lay with her father. He did not know when she laid down or, or she rose. The next day, the firstborn said to the younger, behold, I lay last night with my father. Let us make him drink wine tonight also. Then they go in and lie with him and that they may preserve the offspring of their father. So they made their father drink wine that night also. The younger arose and lay with him, and he did not know when she lay down or when she rose. Thus, <laughs> both daughters of Lot became pregnant by their fathers. The firstborn, uh, the firstborn bore a son, uh, 
and called his name Moab. And he is the father of the Moabites to this day. And the younger bore a son and, and called him Ben-Ami. And he is the father of the Ammonites to this day. All right? All right. It's good. All right. So after the catastrophic destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, right, Lot found himself in really a disorienting and, and frightening reality, right, with, with, the, with the smoke of the burning cities still lingering in the air. You know, he and his two daughters fled to a cave in the mountains, right? So this shift from a bustling city life filled with, with commerce and community to a, to, a, to a stark isolation in a cave that have that it must have been really overwhelming, right? Imagine Lot's emotional state at this particular moment, right? You know, he just witnessed a complete annihilation of a city that he called home, right? A place where he had lived, raised his family, and built relationships, right? The weight of such loss could be suffocating, right? Gone uh, where, where the familiar streets and neighbors, you know, replaced by barren landscapes that echo despair, Right. So in, in that cave, Lot was not just physically isolated from the world that he once knew. He was emotionally adrift, grappling with grief and confusion over the sudden upheaval of his life. Right. So for Lot, the sense of loneliness must have been palatable. Right. Uh, he had chosen to live in Sodom, believing that he could maintain his faith while engaging with a society that was in many ways morally bankrupt. Now, stripped from his home and community, uh, he likely faced deep regret, right? That the silence of the cave would have been served as a constant reminder of what he had lost, his home, his friends, and 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 perhaps his, his even his own sense of identity, right? This is not merely just a change of location. This is a seismic sh shift in in his life narrative you know and as the days turned into weeks isolation would have weighed heavily on him right um pushing him into a deeper contemplation of his decisions and the cost of his compromise so lots daughters uh, shared in this isolation but experienced experienced it through a different lens they were left feeling abandoned, right? Grappling with their feels, fears and uncertainties of their future. You know, having witnessed the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah and their loss of their mother, right? Who turned into a pillar of salt, right? For looking back. Uh, who, accor uh, who, according to the narrative, did not, escape, did, did, did not escape with them, right? The emotional toll of them must have been immense, right? That they, they were not only mourning their home, but also the family dynamics that had shaped, that, that had been shattered, right? With no man left to marry, they felt their futures were bleak. You know, in a society where, where lineage and offspring held significant value, um, the absence of potential husbands meant they would face the prospect of remaining childless, right? So, which, which was considered a fate worse than death. And that in that particular time. So their fears of being alone and childless would have been would have compounded by their their isolation in the cave. Their lives, once filled with possibilities, were now restricted to the confines of a dark, lonely space. Right. They had witnessed the sinful lifestyle of Sodom, but they were now confronted with a new reality. Survival in a world felt hostile that felt hostile and uncertain. The weight of their father's emotional state and their circumstances created an atmosphere of despair and just desperation. Now they were grappling with the questions that had no easy answers, right? What does the future hold? Will we ever have families of our own? Are, are, are we truly alone in this vast and unforgiving world? So in the aftermath of such destruction, right? It's easy to see how fear can deprive, can drive people to make irrational decisions. Now, da Lot's daughters, you know, uh, feeling abandoned and anxious about their prospects, would likely have been influenced by the hopelessness sur that was that surrounded them. Instead of seeking comfort in their faith, 
they were left to navigate their fear without guidance, you know, resulting in a desperate attempt to preserve their lineage in the most unlikely way, right? Their emotional turbulence is uh, of, of this situation highlights not only the personal struggles of Lotz and his daughters, but also the broader implications of living in a world that strays far from God's design. So as we reflect on this, uh, on, on this text, you know, it serves as, it, it serves as a reminder of, of the deep impact that loss and isolation can have in our own lives. Lot and his daughters face consequences of living in morally compromised society, right? And, and their emotional states reveal a deep, that the deeper struggles that arise from such experiences, right? So in our own lives, we might find ourselves in periods of isolation or uncertainty, right? <laughs> but it's crucial to seek God's presence and guidance to navigate the turbulent waters. Instead of succumbing to the fears of despair, we are called to trust his plans for our future, no matter how bleak things may appear. So, in the aftermath of Sodom's destruction, Lot's daughters found themselves in an unprecedented situation, grappling with fear and uncertainties about their future, right? With their homes obliterated and their, their options seemingly non-existent for men, uh, desperation began to cloud their judgment. In, in Genesis uh, verses 31-32, we see a chilling proposal that they hatched. Right, a plan to get their father drunk so they can lie with him and preserve their family line. So this idea is not just a reckless whim. It stemmed from a deep-seated fear that of being alone in a world that had suddenly become hostile and unrecognizable. Right, The daughters believed that they had no viable options left in securing their futures. So they resorted to this morally... Uh, ir re this this morally uh, disgusting scheme, right? Showcasing the lengths in which fear can drive us, right? Their plan reflects a moral compromise. Under normal circumstances, such an action would be unthinkable, right? But the weight of their situation led them to place led them to a place where they felt justified in their actions, right? They were not merely acting out of selfish desire, right? They were convinced that their survival hinged on this drastic decision. So this brings us to the light of, of, criti of the critical uh, uh, aspect of human nature. When faced with desperation, we can sometimes lose sight of our values and our ethics. The daughter that the daughters in their isolation and fear had convinced themselves that their plan was the only way forward, right? This moment illustrates how quickly fear can distort our perception um, of right and wrong, right? Pushing us to take actions we would never consider under ordinary circumstances. Also, the influence of their environment cannot be overlooked either, right? Growing up in Sodom, a city steep in moral decay, undoubtedly shaped their understanding of acceptable behaviors. Sodom was known for its wickedness and Lot's daughters had witnessed at first hand the depravity that characterized their society. They had been, they had likely been exposed to a distorted view of relationship and morality where the ends justifies the means, right? In a place where, where sin was rampant and the norms were, were turned upside down, you know, it's no wonder their moral compass had become skewed. Living in such an environment can lead to the normalization of behaviors that would otherwise be considered ab abhorrent. So this highlights the essential truth, right? Our surroundings significantly influences our decision and values, right? The daughter's actions served as a stark reminder of how easily we can adopt the values of the world around us, especially when we are in a when in vulnerable positions. Instead of, of leaning, you know, into their faith and seeking guidance from God, they resorted to a flawed logic of their surroundings. 
their under their upbringing in Sodom had not equipped them with the necessary tools to navigate their predicament in a godly manner. Rather than seeking God's wisdom or consulting with Lot, they allowed their fears to drive them into a morally bankrupt decision. So in today's world, we, we, we too face influences that can shape our perspective and our actions. You know, whether it's societal pressures or media portrayals or, 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 or the values of those around us, right? The environment can have a profound impact on our decision making. So it's crucial to remain vigilant and discerning, right? Anchoring our beliefs uh, and choices in God's word rather than the shifting sands of societal norms. The daughter's experience illustrates the danger of compromising our values due to external pressures, right? And it does, right? So, so as we reflect on the story of, of, uh, of Lot's daughters here in, the, in this part, right? we are challenged to consider the sources of our own influences, right? Are we allowing the culture around us to dictate our choices? Are we making decisions based on fear rather than faith? So this text reminds us of the importance of holding fast to our principles, our godly principles, especially in times of crisis, right? Uh, uh, rather than succumbing to fear driven decisions, you know, uh, we can seek God's guidance and trust his provisions in our lives, you know, by surrounding ourselves in his truth, you know, we can navigate our circumstances with integrity and wisdom, you know, avoiding the moral pitfalls that often arise from desperation and fear. You know, ultimately the story serves as a cautionary tale, um, urging us to recognize the effects of our environment on our values and choices while sh encouraging us to pursue righteousness, godly righteousness amidst the chaotic world. Now, let's look at verses 33 to 35. Here, we confront one of the most disturbing and tragic moments in the Bible, the act of incest between Lot and his daughter, right? So this passage not only highlights the extreme desperation of the daughters, but also it serves as a sobering reminder of the dangers of losing control, you know, particularly through intoxication. Now we've all been there, you know what I mean? And if you haven't, I'm surprised, right? But we've all made those stupid decisions to do stupid stuff, right? But Lot in his state of drunkenness was completely unaware of what transpired that night, right? His daughters driven by fear and misguided belief that they were preserving their family line took advantage of their father's incapacitated state. Now this scenario starkly illustrates the perils of alcohol and drugs and, and, and the loss of self-control, especially intertwined with the sacred bonds of faith and family. Alcohol, while often socially accepted nowadays, can lead individuals down dangerous paths when consumed excessively. In Lot's case, his drunkenness rendered him vulnerable uh, and defenseless, you know, allowing his daughters to act on their, uh, on their desperate plan without his consent or awareness, right? So this highlights the significant risks associated with losing control, both for the individuals and those around them, right? In the moments of intoxication, People make decisions they would never consider while being sober, jeopardizing their relationship and their moral integrity. For Lot, excuse me, for Lot, the consequences of his actions would extend far beyond that faithful night or those faithful nights, right? They would reverberate through the generations, right? That the scriptures remind us that being filled with the spirit is more fulfilling and, and life affirming than succumbing to alcohol, the influence of alcohol. You know what I mean? As Christians, we're called to exercise self-control and make choices that honor God, our families and ourselves, right? The gravity of the daughter's action cannot be overstated, right? They took advantage of their father's drunkenness to fulfill the desire for children, leading to a scenario that completely betrays the sanctity of family. 
right? The familial bonds intended to be a, 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 a to, are intended to be as sources of love and protection and trust. There were shattered in, in in a few reckless nights, right? Instead of honoring their father, they exploited his vulnerability, resulting in the births of Moad and Benami, two nations that would become adversaries uh, to Israel, right? The, the shame and complexity of their actions resonate through scripture at, and serve as a sobering reminder of how a moment of desperation can lead to catastrophic consequences. Their choices um, raises an important questions about the impact of fear and decision making. When we are in desperate situations, we might resort to actions that violate our values and beliefs, right? The, the daughters likely felt an immense pressure to ensue their family line to continue right but their choices to reveal deep misunderstanding of what it means to rely on god in challenging times right rather than than, than seeking divine misunderstanding of what it means to rely on god in challenging times rather than seeking divine guidance or support from their father that they, they took matters into their own hands right leading to a dev to devastating results that this decision fueled by desperation and feel, you know, illustrates the length to which people might go when they feel backed into a corner, emphasizing the importance of seeking God's wisdom in times of crisis. Guys, so, you know, in, in, in considering the aftermath of this tragic episode, right? We are left to ponder the consequences of, of their actions, right? The incestuous relationship created a legacy that would lead to further conflict and division among nations, right? The, the, ch the children born from this act were not the product of their desperation. They represented the culmination of a series of poor choices that spiraled out of control. Like the, this story serves as a cautionary tale that would have ripple effects of sin and how a moment of weakness can lead into, you know, con these consequences. And sometimes, you know, um, I don't believe in generational curses, but this is generational consequences, right? Um, so ultimately, the act of incense in this passage is not merely a shocking narrative, but it is a deep reminder of the importance of maintaining self-control and up holding the sanctity of family relationships. You know, as we reflect on Lot and his daughters, we're challenged to examine our own lives and the choices that we make. Are we allowing fear and desperation or temptation to lead us down the path of moral compromise? You know, let, let this story be a wake up call to seek God's guidance, right? Exercise self-control and strive to honor our families in every decision that we make, right? through uh, reflection and prayer, you know, we can learn to navigate circumstances with wisdom, ensuring that we remain true to our values, even in the face of fear and uncertainty. Now let's look at verses 36 and 38. Here, we encounter a somber outcome of Lot's daughter's desperate action, the birth of, of Moab, and ben, uh, ben Ami, right? The two sons were, were, these two sons were not just names in a ge genealogy. They became ancestors to two significant uh, nations, the Moabites and the Ammonites, right? This, this moment captures the tragic consequences of moral compromise and the lengths to which fear and desperation can drive individuals. The implication of these births would stretch far beyond the immediate context, leading to an ongoing conflict that would shape the history of the Israelites from, uh, for generations to come. Moab was born of the first daughter, right? Uh, would go on to be the founder of the Moabite nation. You know, uh, throughout the Bible, the Moabites are often depicted as antagonistic towards the Israelites, leading to numerous conflicts and hostilities, right? For instance, in the book of Numbers, we see, we see uh, uh, King Balak 
of Moab attempting to, to hire Balaam, ba Balaam uh, to curse the Israelites as they approached the promised land, right? So the, this enmity continued into the later history, you know, with the Moabites often opposing Israel uh, and becoming a thorn in their side, you know, and, and, and similarly, Ben-Ami, the son of the second daughter, became an ancestor of the Ammonites, who also had a contentious relationship with Israel, right? The Ammonites, known for their hostility towards Israel, further entrenching the legacy of conflict between Lot's daughter, daughters and the decisions that they made in that cave, right? Now, the births of Moab and Ben-Ami serves as a deep reminder of how one reckless decision can have a far-reaching effect. Lot's daughters believe that they were just acting out of necessity, but their choices led to uh, 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 the creation of two nations that would come synonymous with strife and conflict with Israel. You know, the, the desperation that fueled their actions did not just impact their immediate lives, but it reverberated through history, illustrating the notion that, that our decisions, especially those uh, uh, made out of haste and here, can have consequences, right? Uh, and, and they can, you know, and, and, and again, I don't believe in generational curses. I don't believe that, you know, they can have consequences for uh, last far beyond our lifetimes. I just think that they can have consequences in our lifetimes. So don't get it twisted. I'm not talking about generational curses. Okay. So this brings us to a crucial point, right? The legacy of compromise, the choices uh, uh, made by Lot's daughters represent a broader theme on how to, on how desperation can lead us to compromise our values and ethics, you know, often with unintended results. Their actions driven uh, by fear and extinction, leading them to take drastic measures and contradict the very principles of faith and morality that they were meant to uphold, Right. So, so the tragic irony is that in, in trying to secure their future, they inadvertently secured it a legacy of conflict and division that would plague their descendants for centuries, right? So in our own lives, we must recognize the potential consequences of our decisions, especially when we're under pressure or, or feeling desperate. You know, it's easy to lose sight of our values when we're faced with overwhelming challenges, right? Like Lot's daughters, we might find ourselves at a crossroad where we must choose between a godly path and one that seems uh, expedient, but ultimately leads to harm, right? The story serves as a cautionary tale about the need for discernment and reliance on God rather than succumbing to fear and taking matters into our own hands. Right. And we see that in our daily lives. We also we, we take matters in our own hands every day. Right. But we got to learn of what discernment is. Right. So. The long term repercussions of Lot's daughter's actions remind us that our choices rarely are isolated events. You know, they create ripples of effect. Um, you know, not, not only in our immediate situation, but also those around us, you know, um, and when when we compromise our values, we may advertently set off a chain reaction that leads to conflict, strife and suffering. Ultimately, the birth of Moab and Ben-Ami teaches us a valuable lesson about, you know, the significance of our choices and the importance of seeking God's guidance in our decision making process. Instead of acting out of desperation, we're encouraged to trust God's provision and timing. And by doing so, we can provide pitfalls of, of, uh, uh, of compromise, right? And to ensure that our legacies reflect his love, grace, and righteousness rather than consequences of monetary fears. You know, so as we reflect on, on, on this tax, let us be mindful of the decisions that we make in in you know, that it has and that can have a lasting impact on our lives and the lives of those around us. Amen. So as we reflect on, you know, the story of Lot's and his daughters, it becomes evident that there are lessons that can be drawn in our for our own lives today. 
One of the most significant takeaways is the importance of avoiding compromise, especially when faced with fear or uncertainty. In times of crisis, guys, uh, it can be all too tempting to abandon our convictions in favor of quick solutions or what seems to be expedient, right? Lot's daughters found themselves in a desperate situation, right? And rather than seeking God's guidance, they made a series of choices that would have far reaching consequences of that time, right? We are called to hold firmly to our beliefs, even when circumstances seem dire. Our faith should be our anchor in turbulent times, guiding uh, us towards decisions that aligns with God's will rather than our fears. You know, so how do we strengthen uh, our resolve to avoid compromise? Well, it begins with a commitment to staying grounded in your faith, right? This, this, this means regularly engaging in scripture, attending worship, you know, being a part of a, a church community that encourages us in our walk with God, right? So when we immerse ourselves in God's word, we avoid, uh, we build a solid foundation that can help us navigate the challenges of life, right? And additionally, surrounding ourselves with fellow believers in a in a real Bible believing church, not this Shyamalan and Ding Dong, you know, hyper Calvinistic, hyper charismatic Pentecostal churches, right? But real Bible believing churches, right? Um, with fellow believers who can support and keep us accountable, that can make a significant difference. Right now, remember, we're not meant to walk this journey alone. We're supposed to do it with other believers. So I said it. <laughs> Anyways, another essential lesson of Lot's story is the need to seek God's guidance actively. You know, when we are faced with challenging decisions, we need to we, we should turn to prayer and look for his wisdom. The Bible encourages us is to ask and it will be given to you in Matthew 7, 7. This is not just a suggestion. It's a promise, right? Our, our moments of uncertainty and seeking God through prayer can illuminate the right path forward, right? Unfortunately, too often, we try to solve our own problems through human solutions, acting on our own understanding or relying on our own limited perspectives. The daughter's actions were driven by desperation and fear leading them to make choices that contradict God's design for family and morality. Now, when we find ourselves in test, in test spots, it's critical to pause, pray, listen to God's voice. It's not always easy, right? And sometimes the answers may not come immediately, but trusting in God's timing and directions can provide the clarity we need to make decisions that honor him. You know, we can avoid the pitfalls of desperation by committing to seek divine wisdom instead of resorting to our flawed instincts. And lastly, we must understand that our actions have consequences, both immediate and also far reaching. Right. What, what, what we might think what might seem like a small compromise today can snowball into a significant issues down the road. Lot's daughters believe that they were making a rational choice in a time of crisis, but their actions led to a legacy of conflict between nations and, you know, and in generations to come. Right. And it did. We see the Moites and the Ammonites. Right. So this should serve as a wake up call for us. Every decision we make, even seemingly minor ones, has the potential to shape our futures. It does. So consider this. How often do we allow small co compromises creep into our lives? Maybe it's a little dishonesty in a conversation or a slight deviation of our values when faced with peer pressure. You know, we, we might think that, that these choices are harmless, but they can pave the way for bigger issues later on, right? Our integrity and faithfulness to God are built on a series of daily choices. By consciously choosing to uphold our convictions, our biblical convictions, 
uh, we can avoid this, you know, slipping down a slippery slope that leads to um, uh, greater moral dilemmas. Right. So here's, you know, the, the, the story of Lot and his daughters challenges us to reflect on our own lives and the decisions that we make daily. You know, let's commit to avoiding compromise, actively seeking God's guidance in prayer uh, and understanding the potential consequences of our actions. Right. When we hold fast to our convictions, you know, and lean on God's wisdom, we can navigate life's tr challenges with grace and integrity, ensuring that our legacy reflects his love and the truth rather than the complications that arise with hasty decisions. So as we move forward, let us strive to be people who trust God's plan and stay rooted in our faith, knowing that he is always with us in every season of our life. You know, the Bible says that he'll never leave us nor forsake us guys. Right. So, um, yeah. So, as we wrap up our exploration of Lot's daughters, it's essential for us to reflect on some key points of their story and the valuable lessons that we can draw from their experiences, right? Lot's daughter found themselves in a incredibly desperate decision, uh, death situation after the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Faced with an overwhelming fear of their future, they resorted to a morally <laughs> irrehensible plan that ultimately led to the legacy of conflict and pain. Right. Their decision to lie with their father, uh, driven by desperation and a desire to preserve their family line, serves as a stark reminder. Um, uh, as a stark reminder of of how fear can cloud judgment uh, and lead us to compromise our values. The births of Moab and, and Ben-Ami uh, are not just tragic outcomes. You know, they they illustrate and how it, one reckless decision can have a deep and far reaching consequences sometimes in that kind of uh, situations that, it, you know, that they have that that can impact generations. And it can, as you can see, it's scriptural. So uh, and I'm not saying generational curses. We're talking about this. Incest is bad, guys. It's always been bad and always will be bad. So what can we learn from this narrative? Right? First, we are reminded of the importance of holding firm to our convictions, even in the face of difficulties and in, in difficult circumstances. Right? Lot's daughters acted out of desperation. But we have the opportunity to turn to God in prayer and seek his guidance when we are feeling lost or afraid. Right? Also, this story teaches us to be uh, vigilant about the small compromises that we make in our lives. Each decision, no matter how minor it seems, can lead to significant repercussions down the road. And by remaining steadfast in our faith and our values, you know, we can navigate life's challenges without succumbing to the pressures around us. Amen. Now, I want to challenge each and every one of you guys, right? Uh, to examine your own lives, right? Are there areas where you might be compromising your values or beliefs, perhaps out of fear or desperation? You know, it, it, it's, it's, easy, it's too easy. It's too easy, right? To let our circumstances dictate our choices. But God calls us to a higher standard, right? So take some time you know, in the next few days and really reflect on your decisions and motivations behind them. You know, are you standing firm in your faith or have you allowed fear to steer you towards choices that do not align with your conviction or God's will? You know, and as you identify these areas, I want to encourage you guys to seek God's strength and wisdom. You know, he is always ready to guide and support when we ask, right? Pray for the courage to remain steadfast in your beliefs you know, and, and for the discernments, you know, to make decisions that honor God. Now, remember, we don't have to navigate these life challenges alone. God is with us every step of the way. So let's strive to learn, to, to learn from the mistakes of Lot's daughters and commit ourselves 
to living the lives that reflects his love, his truth, ensuring that our legacy is one of faithfulness and integrity. Amen. Amen. So before I let you guys go, you know, I want you guys, to, I want to, I want to encourage you guys to go check out the tacticalbibleguy.com and tacticalbiblefellowship.org. You know, uh, these sites can provide an overview of who we are, what we're about, you know, and stuff like that. Also guys, uh, we'd love for you guys, you know, uh, uh, to connect with us and our YouTube channels and our Facebook groups, right? All you gotta do is on Facebook or YouTube is, is search for tactical Bible guy or tactical Bible fellowship. Uh, you know, also we're on true social rumble and Patreon. So by subscribing to these guys and liking our content and, 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 uh, uh, making a comment, it, it helps us expand our reach to share the gospel message more effectively. Now, don't forget our podcasting channels, guys. We're on Tactical Bible Guy, Tactical Bible Fellowship. We're on all the major podcasting platforms like Apple, Spotify, Amazon, CastBox, Deezer, you know, iHeartRadio. So you can listen anywhere you prefer, right? Um, and also, guys, we have an exciting clothing line. It's just a t-shirt line right now. Um, it's called Tactical Apparel, right? And you can, you know, you can find our gear on the Tactical Bible Guy website. And if you guys want to support us, go to your TikTok shop, search for a tactical apparel, and we offer shirts and stuff like that starting at $18 plus shipping, right? This is a great clothing line. I took the time to design these shirts and stuff like that. So guys, none of the money goes into our pockets. All the money that comes out of that goes to our homeless ministry, right? So I want to thank you guys for being here today and allowing me to share God's word with you, you know. Uh, let us conclude our time together with a prayer and benediction, you know, seeking guidance and strength. And as we apply these truths in our lives, amen. So let's pray. Heavenly father, we come before you with humble hearts, grateful for your word and for the lessons that we have learned today. Thank you for the story of lots and his daughters, which reminds us of the importance of holding firm to our convictions, even in times of fear and uncertainty. Lord, we ask for your guidance in our, in our daily lives as we navigate the challenges uh, that we face. Help us seek your wisdom in every decision that we make so we don't succumb to the pressures that uh, surround us. Father, we recognize the weight of our choices and impact that they can have on our lives. Um, strengthen us to stand firm in our faith and to trust in your plans for our futures. You know, when we feel overwhelmed, remind us to turn to you in prayer and seek your strength you know and as we leave uh this online bible study today may we carry the lessons in our hearts striving to reflect your love and time and your truth in all that we do guide us protect us and help us remain steadfast in your faith we ask this in your son jesus name amen 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 all right guys so may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god the love of the god uh, the father and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with you all as you, as you go forth from this place may you be strengthened in your faith holding firmly to your convictions in every circumstances guys remember that god is always with you guiding your steps and providing wisdom in times of uncertainties let his light shine through us guys as we navigate life's challenges ensuring that our choices reflect his love and his truth and and may you find courage to stand firm against the pressures of this world right and seek his guidance in all things so go in peace knowing that you're not alone in this journey trust his plans for your life and may his blessings abound in your heart and home. Amen. God bless you guys. We guys will see you on Wednesday with more of Genesis. God bless you guys.